What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today was Apple's peak performance event where we saw several new products announced. I was live streaming the event, it was a fun time and I'll talk more about everything that was announced near the end of this video. But after the event ended, we got iOS 15.4, the RC version for both developers and public beta testers. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got the RC builds of iPadOS 15.4, tvOS 15.4, HomePod OS 15.4, watchOS 8.5, and macOS Monterey 12.3. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and recapping the software before the public release, which we'll talk about when to expect that here in a few minutes. And we're also gonna discuss the performance, battery life bugs, bug fixes, all of that fun stuff. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update. So since we're going from a beta to a public release or a final build, you can see here the size is always going to be large. This time it came in over five gigabytes at 5.25 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And if we head into our settings, general about 15.4, we could see here the new build number is 19E241. So very similar to what we saw with beta five. So I would assume that not too much has changed going from beta five to the RC. And if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that remains unchanged at 1.59.03. So if you had any cell connectivity issues in beta five, those probably won't be resolved with the RC or the final release, unless of course we get an RC2, which is always possible. All right, so now what's new here in the RC build of iOS 15.4? And you guys know, I don't like talking about every single new feature coming in the final release. Otherwise, it would just seem like a copy of the video that comes the next week. So I'm just gonna do a brief recap of the major features. And then I also wanna talk about the new wallpaper that was just added here with the RC build. So if we go into our settings, go to wallpaper, choose new wallpaper, and then to live, down here at the bottom, you will see we have the new green live wallpaper, which of course is for the green iPhone 13 that was just announced today. So this wallpaper has been added with the RC build. And unfortunately, this is the only new wallpaper in 15.4. That's pretty disappointing. I hope that we get new wallpapers in 15.5 but that's pretty much all we're gonna see here with 15.4 is that additional live wallpaper for the green iPhone 13. Now, as always with the RC builds, we do also get a sneak peek at the release notes here, which is what everybody's gonna see when the final public release comes out. And there's always some things in here that we didn't know beforehand, but after looking through all these, they're pretty much all what we've already known, except for down here, it shows this release also includes bug fixes, and it talks about some of the bug fixes included with 15.4. So we'll talk about those here in a moment, but you can see we do have the face ID with a mask. We also have the new emoji. I believe there's 37 new emoji in this update. We have FaceTime. It says share play sessions can be initiated directly from supported applications. We talked about that. We have a new Siri voice. We have the vaccine cards for EU. So the EU digital COVID certificate is added to the health application. Some people were still having issues with that even here in the RC build. So hopefully by the final, it is you know working flawlessly. And then for those that use shortcuts a lot, you can see right here, it says shortcuts now supports adding, removing, or querying tags with reminders. So we talked about that, I believe in the first beta, but I haven't really talked about that since then. So that is one thing that is also here in 15.4. Now, I did also wanna talk about the tap to pay feature because this of course is coming soon. That is going to allow you to tap another iPhone to pay. You won't have to have a third party reader like the square reader. So this is gonna be great for small businesses or food trucks. And that is in the code of 15.4, but we're just waiting on you know companies like Stripe and others to allow this feature before we see it actually functioning on our iPhones. But just know that that feature, that functionality is included with iOS 15.4. And the same goes with the digital driver's license. So this is also in the code. We're just waiting on outside sources to allow it before we see anything go live on our iPhones. Now, as far as those bug fixes go, I do wanna briefly mention those because we didn't talk about every single one of them here on the channel. So first up, it says, keyboard may insert a period between type numbers. So that was a bug. I never experienced that throughout the betas, I don't believe, but if you did have that, that has been fixed here with the RC and the final. There's also a fix for the news widget in the today view. Sometimes when you tapped on it, it would not open up the articles that has been patched. 
Also, photos and videos may not sync to iCloud Photo Library. So if you had any issues with it not syncing correctly to your iCloud Photo Library, which I know a lot of people here on the channel have talked about previously. So that's been fixed here with 15.4. Also, speak screen accessibility feature may quit unexpectedly within the books application. That's a very specific one. So I doubt any of you have had that one. And then the final bug fix is live listen may not turn off when switched off in the control center. So if you guys use that to listen in on conversations and stock people, you may have had the bug where it just does not turn off, but that has been fixed here with 15.4. But aside from that, I've not really noticed anything else changed or new here in the RC build of iOS 15.4. I'm still having issues with AirPlay to HomePod. It's still just very buggy and very laggy. I've given up hope on that ever being fixed. And then some people might still have the storage bug. I would assume it's fixed for most people, but if you are still having it, that's unfortunate. Again, I would probably just reset your device, you know, restore your device and it should be fixed after that. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels great, but based on the build number, it's not too much different at all compared to beta five. So I would expect nearly identical performance to beta five. And I did go ahead and run a Geekbench test right here and you can see the scores. I got a 1756 on the single core and a 4540 on the multi-core. So very respectable scores there, very strong scores, which does indicate, of course, we are on a very stable build of 15.4, but it's always good to get some reassurance from these results. And then as far as the battery life, battery life continues to be great and better than 15.3.1 in my opinion. So once again, I would not expect a major change from the fifth beta, but if you were having good battery life, you know, you're probably gonna remain having good battery life here on the RC build and the final release. And for me, that's a big deal because 15.3.1 had some battery drain issues. I've talked about that in previous videos and I've not had one instance of battery draining here on the betas really throughout the whole beta stages of 15.4, which is a good sign. All right, so now what is next for Apple? So first up, let's talk about iOS 15.4, the final public release. So according to Apple themselves, that is coming next week, most likely on the 14th or the 15th. They just said next week, but it's always usually on a Monday or a Tuesday. So I was hoping it would be later this week, but since the Apple products that got announced today don't come out until next week, we're not gonna see 15.4 until early on next week. Again, most likely on the 14th or 15th. And then after 15.4 comes 15.5. So I would expect to see the first beta of 15.5 really as early as this week, but it's most likely coming early next week. And I don't know what to expect from that version. It's not gonna be as exciting as 15.4, but hopefully we do at least see one new wallpaper in that update. I would love that. And then finally, let's discuss what Apple announced today. So of course I did go live for the Apple event as I do for every single Apple event. So shout out to everybody who was in that stream. It was a lot of fun, but Apple did unveil two products that I'm extremely excited about. So number one is the brand new Mac Studio. So this is essentially a Mac Mini Mac Pro hybrid. So it comes with the all new M1 Ultra chip that is just insanely fast. And it's gonna put even the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips to shame. And the base model with the M1 Ultra chip comes with a 20 core CPU, a 48 core GPU, and a 32 core neural engine so it starts at four thousand dollars so it is pricey but it is worth it if it's as powerful as apple says and there is also an m1 max version that starts at two thousand dollars and to go along with the mac studio apple also unveiled the all new studio display so this is a 27 inch aluminum external display it's a 5k display and the stand actually comes with it. You don't have to pay extra for the stand. So you can pay a little bit extra for a height adjustable stand, but it comes with one, which is great. And you can also get the nano texture, which as you can see here, I did go ahead and go with you guys in the live stream, convinced me to go with the nano texture. I wasn't gonna get it, but you guys all convinced me to get it. So I did go with nano texture. And the best part about the studio display is that it also has the A13 Bionic chip inside to power the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So we're gonna have center stage on the webcam of this display, which is awesome. And it's also gonna power the amazing speaker and mic setup. And then of course, as expected, Apple did also announce the iPhone SE3, which comes with 5G, the A15 Bionic chip, better battery life, 
improved durability. So it uses the same glass as the iPhone 13, and then also a new camera system with Smart HDR4, Deep Fusion, and photographic styles. You also get the live text feature, which is nice, but unfortunately there are not any new colors. So we just have the same white, black, and red. So it pretty much looks exactly like the iPhone SE 2020. There's really nothing to discern the two. And my prediction of a price increase was accurate. It now starts at 429 for a 64 gigabyte model, which to me is kind of ridiculous. We should have 128 as the starting storage, especially with a price bump. And then we also got the iPad Air 5, which comes with the M1 chip, 5G, a new front facing camera with center stage, and two new colors. So we got purple and blue, which I love both of them. I really love the purple, but the blue also looks good. So this also comes with a base storage of 64 gigabytes, and it starts at 599, the same price as the iPad Air 4. And then Apple did also unveil a green iPhone 13 and also green for the Pro models as well. So it's called Alpine Green for the 13 Pro and Pro Max, which I like a lot better than the regular green on the 13. But anyways, that is just a brief synopsis of what happened at the Apple event. Also a brief overview of iOS 15.4, the RC build. Of course, I will talk about all of the new features and changes in my final what's new video coming out next week. But if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage and hopefully iOS 15.5 coverage this week. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.